Hello. Um, again, this is uh, Joseph Becker. I'm a physician with the Department, the Division of Emergency Medicine at Stanford University School of Medicine. Um, I'm here to discuss uh, our stroke case discussion and provide you with the questions related to this case. So we'll be watching several video clips uh, regarding a patient with stroke. Um, and without further ado, so this is a brief introduction of the case. The patient we'll be hearing about is a, a man named Ralph. Uh, he goes by the nickname of Gramps. He's a 53-year-old male. He's brought in by his family, and he's noted to be not moving at least one side of his body and as well to have decreased responsiveness. He's not speaking as much as he should. Um, so we're moving along to the first clip. Here we go. Are you going to be able to help him? What's his name? Ralph, but everybody calls him Gramps. Hey, Gramps, Gramps, can you tell me what happened? Uh, I, uh, hey, sir, can you squeeze my hand? Can you squeeze? Was he complaining of any headaches? No, I, I talked to him last night. Nausea, vomiting? No. Your grandfather on any medications? No. Does he take aspirin? No, he hates pills. All right, so we saw there in the clip uh, Ralph and his presentation to the emergency room and how he looked. Um, and some questions are automatically posed by that clip. Uh, the first one is, what are some of the critical historical questions to answer when taking the history of a patient with suspected acute stroke? So what do we want to know about the history when we see these patients? Uh, two, what are some of the common clinical conditions that may mimic the symptoms of acute ischemic stroke? So the non-stroke medical conditions that can lead to focal neurologic findings, such as uh, Ralph is presenting with there. And then number three, what are the critical components of the stroke physical examination? So as we approach a patient with stroke, what are the physical examination uh, components that we want to focus on and make sure that we perform? All right. All right, we'll move on to the next clip. Right, let's get a CBC, PT, PTT, platelet count, fibrinogen type and cross four units. Team's on alert. Malik, look for the BP. Stick of glucose, alert radiology that we're coming in for a non-contrast head CT. BP's 185 over 110. IV, labetalol, 15 mg. Okay, so we watched in that clip as the patient is uh, managed by the providers and uh, several uh, orders and actions were undertaken in that clip. Uh, which brings us to our next question. What immediate interventions or diagnostic studies are critical to obtain on patients with suspected acute stroke, like, like Ralph here? And then, what is the role of the head CT scan in the diagnosis and management of acute stroke? So we heard them talk about CT head there in the, con in the uh, brief clip. What is the reason for that? What is the purpose of obtaining a CAT scan in this uh, patient? All right, we'll move on to the next clip. Are you gonna give him TPA? That, that's what he needs, right? That's what we're trying to assess. Do you know when the symptoms began? No. Do you know anybody who might? Maybe his neighbor, that they, they walked to get their papers in the morning. Can you give him a call? Go, go. CT's ready for us. All right, let's get him upstairs. Thanks. Mark, this is what I was afraid of with the stroke team. People have heard there's a miracle cure. They don't understand the risks. I understand the risks. I've seen patients hemorrhage with TPA. It's no cure-all. That's why we follow a protocol. The results aren't convincing. Look, Carrie, I understand that you have reservations. That's why I'm on the stroke team and you're not. Fine. But if she can't clarify the onset of symptoms... I'd be a fool to give TPA. Okay, so in this clip, we saw the family member uh, ask the providers about a particular treatment for acute ischemic stroke and if this treatment was going to be administered. Um, so this presents our next question. What are some of the contraindications to the use of TPA in suspected acute stroke patients? Why would we not be able to give this therapy that was asked about by the patient's family member? All right. Moving along to the next clip. Um, the CT confirmed an ischemic stroke, and Gramps' neighbor was able to verify that he had no symptoms two hours ago, so he's easily within the 180-minute range. Look. If you're looking for my blessing on this, forget it. Actually, I was hoping that you could talk to all of us. She's already heard from the neurologist and from me that we think her grandfather is a candidate for TPA. I'd like her to hear about the risks from you. Why? I happen to believe that he'll respond to thrombolysis. But if I'm wrong, he could die. She needs to hear that loud and clear. And you want me to tell her? Who better than a respected colleague who's on the other side of the fence? I suspect you won't soft pedal it. I won't. Mark. Thank you.
So we saw there uh, the progression of this patient's case and uh, management in the emergency room, as well as progression of the discussion about this, this treatment, TPA, uh, which brings us to our next question. What are the main adverse outcomes of TPA administration? Uh, in other words, what are the bad things that happen uh, potentially if we give someone TPA? Um, and then uh, the next question, what other treatments are available for patients with acute ischemic stroke? So besides TPA, what other things can we do for these patients to maximize their outcome and, their, um, and, and minimize the effect of their stroke long term? Okay, then our final clip. He had an on-the-table response a few minutes ago. His speech is coming back. Something wrong. Yeah, Gramps, you had a stroke. You're gonna be better now. I couldn't do that. He's being admitted upstairs. Guess Dr. Green made the right call. I wanna thank him. I'll tell him for you. He'll be very pleased. Mm -hmm. All right, so in that clip, we saw some resolution or some improvement of the patient's symptoms. He certainly is able to communicate now, not perfectly, but uh, better than he had been. And as well, he's able to move that left arm, which previously he had not been able to move. Um, there is some discussion about what will happen next, and the patient will be admitted and, and so forth, which brings us to our last question of what monitoring or further treatment will be necessary for acute stroke patients such as Ralph, and what will the eventual disposition of these patients be? All right. So these are the questions associated with this um, case. I look forward to the discussion uh, of this case and these videos with Professor Donald Schreiber um, uh, during our um, stroke case discussion. Okay. Thank you very much.